Welcome back to another PT Pearl from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Dr. Jen. And today we're going to be talking about steroid injection, those Ooh. corticosteroids that people say they're going to get when they have pain in their back or their knee. What do they actually do? Are they valuable? Let's dive in. All right. Talking about injections, particularly mm. those cortisone injections that yes. many people get, right? We're not going to shame anyone here <laughs> no. about using injections. It's very common and they do serve a purpose. But we just want to dive into especially what is the current research saying about them and what do they really do within the body? We're going to go over a lot of stuff and we want to hit up front that we're not saying that they're, they should never be used, that they're right. only bad. You know, based on our takeaways, you're going to see the scenarios in which we think they could be valuable in your journey, getting out of pain. Right. And sometimes, you know, to jumpstart the journey into moving, physical therapy, maybe feeling better, it's something that helps. So we definitely just want to be able to provide education around it. That's all we're trying to do. What people know to be true about these is that they help to reduce pain, right? So if it's something that's going to help to reduce my pain, why wouldn't I want to keep doing it then? Basically, what it does, I'm going to talk to the physiologic level a yeah. little bit, is it kind of halts almost an immune response in our body without getting too complicated. Mm -hmm. It makes our cells communicate a little less, which then brings down some inflammation, mm -hmm. right? So that's great isn't it? And we're going to talk into a little bit of why that might not be great if we're doing it too consistently. Yeah. I mean, you can get like booster injections and over time you can have like, you know, three injections within a three month period. But what we're seeing now is that if you're getting three injections, even over a year period in a particular body part, we're seeing that it can really have an effect on that tendon cellular viability, <laughs> meaning that yeah. that life of that cell and that tendon to respond and work and do its job. If we're stopping that inflammatory response too much and consistently, again, Jen and I always talk about inflammation as a good thing. Right. <laughs> it's our body's response to the environment around us, to the activities that we're doing in our everyday life. And mm -hmm. so if we continue to stop that inflammatory response, we're not going to get the healing we need. Because essentially, when we're talking especially about the cortisone injection, which is what we're mainly going to touch on right now, because yeah. that is typically used in a physical therapy space when, you know, you're you're having so much pain, you get this injection and then you refer to PT. Well, why would I go to PT if I'm getting <laughs> this injection to help me with my pain? We're going to talk about that. But essentially, you know, we're getting the shot to kind of mimic that cortisone response. Yeah. Right. And so we're really trying to, like you said, reduce that inflammatory response and, and that cortisol, which is that hormone that responds to stress. What we're trying to get to is that we're reducing the pain, improving your function, improving your range of motion by really kind of tapping into those white blood cells and, and kind of blocking the, re the natural response within the body in that area. And again, cortisone is one type of corticosteroid, right. which is a whole class of drugs. And there's a lot of different you know, specific drugs underneath that class that might end up in that shot that you end up getting. Um, but we're just going to use cortisone as kind of like the blanket term right now. Right. Just so you know that, that that's not the only one out there. But a few different categories in which these are used is intraarticular or in the joint. Those are the ones that when someone says, oh, I need a shot in my knee and they're having knee pain or specifically like joint related pain, mm -hmm. it would be intraarticular. We have epidural which is something that is kind of put into the sheath of our spine. Mm -hmm. Again, that's going to try and attack, not attack, but lessen some central things that might be going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, especially when we're talking about like sciatica, spinal stenosis, yes. degeneration of the spine, that's typically when you'll see that kind of shot done. Totally. So the ones that people might get in their back or their neck might be right. a little bit more of an epidural type shot or trigger point, which mm -hmm. we've talked about before. There are those little knots and knobs that you'll get all over the place and people might just get trigger point steroid shots into their shoulder blades or their back or again, really yeah. anywhere that they are going to have a trigger point. And then when we're talking like some of the most common ones that you're going to hear about, which are like your 
prednisone or your cortisone, your dexta, uh, methazone. dexta methazone. Yeah. <laughs> All the zones. All the zones of these. <laughs> it ended with zone. It's a corticosteroid. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Next question. <laughs> but these are more so falling under like the effect of having a glucocorticoid, which really just means that it's metabolizing in those carbs, fats, and proteins and really helping to to lessen that inflammatory response through that kind of mechanism within the body. And this just means that it's actually more of a systemic anti-inflammatory. So it's kind of working on the body at that systemic level, which means, which we've broken down before. Systemic means that it's, it's working as a whole. So it's really going to get that inflam- anti-inflammatory response as a whole. It's not in a particular just area, even though the shot gets put in a particular area, it still has more of that sim- systemic anti-inflammatory effect. We just shoot it in that one area. Yeah, it's going to be a little more concentrated in that area, but your whole body's going to respond to now this cortisone-based drug or cortisol-based drug being in your system. If we're talking about a localized area of the body and saying, okay, if I'm just getting it in this area, you know, maybe a few times, I'm just affecting the cartilage in this area. I should be fine everywhere else, right? Well, are we? Well, if this is more of a systemic anti-inflammatory effect that I'm having throughout the body, well, then am I just affecting the cartilage in that area or could I be having an effect elsewhere in my body as well? Some of the recent studies, especially like they're showing that, especially again, if we're doing this on a consistent basis, a little bit more than just once for pain control, right? We're seeing like a decreased in cellular proliferation. So like the growth of your cells dividing and growing. We're seeing that it could impair your collagen production and actually alter the collagen and the extracellular matrix of like the whole composition within our body as well, really impeding the inflammatory pathway, decreasing possible tensile strength within the body, and then really just increasing apoptosis, which is the cell death. Because a lot of people will will like to say, oh, well, I got a shot and my pain was gone and it was great. And actually my pain didn't come back. And again, those are the cases in which you and I might agree like, okay, that shot clearly played a very valuable Mm -hmm. role in your healing journey because it got you out of pain and it got you, here's the next step, back into the activities that were going to help keep you in that place. Back walking outside, maybe doing your regular gym activities, maybe whatever your daily movement patterns or exercise. Now you could lift your kid above your head again and didn't right. and didn't feel that pain you in your shoulder. You were all of a sudden restricting your movement. Yeah. So again, when it comes with something else like jumping back into the activity that you love so much and it brings you that purpose and you're happier and you're releasing less, you know, stress s- signals into your system anyway then yeah, that original inflammation might not come back because now you're in a much better environment that's promoting a lot better response in your body. A specific study from 2017, they they really looked at two different groups and they did injections every 12 weeks for two years. Some were saline, some were cortisone injections. Saline basically just being salt water that it just almost helps hydrate you. And what they found was that there's actually an, a significant increase in cartilage volume loss with the people who had that 12-week steroid injection. And really, after two years, there was not really a significant difference. And they it was particularly about the knees. There was not really a particular difference between the two groups in in terms of pain. So Or function. Or function. Because that is one of the things that you will see in research. Certain studies might say, okay, this group that was getting steroid injections did feel short-term relief. Yes. And there's always the caveat. However, when we looked at one year, two years, however long down the road, there was no difference. Mm -hmm. It's something to just, we need to have very informed consent on what we're really doing. And I think having more of that transparent conversation around okay, this is what you're going to do. How often are you really doing that? Yes, although again, like we said, there was a decrease in that short-term relief of less than six weeks, but the only way to find long-term relief of not having pain after six weeks is that they had to do physical therapy. So it, it just continues to, to reiterate this point that though they will help in the short term, you don't want to continue to get them consistently. However, in the in the medical system, we get really crafty. If this corticosteroid or this steroid injection is reducing the tissue viability, and what, why don't we add in something else 
That, that will helps. help improve tissue viability. Yeah. And then it'll be like, it'll balance out. It's going to be A negative fine. and a positive. Boom. So they, they basically added hyaluronic acid in. Which is yummy and good for the body. Yeah. It's like butter for your joints, right? And butter for your tissues. It really helps lubricate things up. So they're like, let's put some hyaluronic acid in with these steroid injections. And that's really going to help solve this problem. That wasn't the case. Essentially, the cortisone itself was enough to just con- do the joint destruction that the hyaluronic acid really coming in doesn't have any effect. Even though you might be told, oh, this is going to help to combat that. Will it really? Like it's it's great in theory, but in mm. actuality, research is showing that it's not really helping. There can be value for these in helping reduce that initial amount of pain right. so that we can get into movements, rehab, physical therapy, working with a trainer, whatever the next part of that step is to once we do have a little bit of reduced pain, once we have a little bit of slack to play with, we do whatever we can ourselves to keep ourselves there. And they did see good outcomes when it was combined with physical therapy, Mm -hmm. especially after a year when with using like the intraarticular, so the joint one with Mm. the glucosteroid, which is like the most common one that we talked about, right? So when you're using that in combination with physical therapy, it provides this window of opportunity. Now, here's my opportunity of decreased pain, Mm. not to just go back to what I was doing before that caused this, because Mm. obviously there's some kind of compensatory pattern or something that I'm missing. Maybe it's weakness. Maybe it's a mobility restriction. You don't know until you go get assessed and checked, right? So use that reduced pain as a winner of opportunity to start doing the things you weren't doing before and to start moving more. I mean, that's that's everything. And we we know people who've gotten the, the injection as well, who felt no difference in symptoms. Mm-hmm. So it's also not guaranteed that it's going to have a pain reduction. And we know people who have gotten the injections. My dad, I mean, he mm-hmm. got one, didn't notice anything for the first few days. And then he said he woke up one morning. Gone. No pain. Everything was gone. And then he was just like, He took the next step and said, okay, what can I do right now? While Mm -hmm. I'm feeling good, while my body's in this this place where I have a little more space to move, what can I do? Yeah. When all said and done, steroids, consistent use, if that's all you're doing, is something we would definitely advise against as people who aren't supposed to advise on medication. (laughs) It's not the solution. It's not the solution. It's a window of opportunity to move. Thanks for joining us on another episode. I hope you learned a little bit about those injections, when to use them, maybe when not to use them. And if you have more questions, comment below. What's been your experience with them? So let us know. Have you felt better? Have you not felt better? Have you used it with therapy? Let us know what you're feeling and what your experience is below. And don't miss out on future ones. So stay stay subscribed, stay tuned in because we have tons more education. 